Annapurna is a steep, towering Himalayan peak located in north-central Nepal. Standing at 8,091 meters at its highest summit, it is the 10th tallest mountain in the world and one of only 14 8,000 meter peaks on the planet. Annapurna was the first 8,000 meter peak to be successfully summited when the feat was accomplished by a team of French mountaineers on June 3, 1950, who made their ascent from the north face of the mountain, notably without the use of bottled oxygen. Despite this early success by the French summit team, however, in the following years, Annapurna would earn a reputation as one of the most difficult, dangerous, and deadly 8,000 meter peaks with its fearsome reputation and high mortality rate rivaled only by the infamous K2. While the north face has by far the gentlest slope of the mountain and the simplest route of ascension to the summit, it also sports notoriously unpredictable climbing conditions, as this gentler slope creates perfect conditions for frequent large avalanches to sweep down the north face even after light snowfall. In combination with the avalanche risk and the fact that the north face had been ascended before, climbers attempting to reach the summit of Annapurna would soon begin to attempt to ascend the peak along the significantly steeper other sides of the mountain, including its infamous south face, an intimidating wall of ice, snow, and rock with a nearly constant 55 degree slope stretching from the glacier at its foot to the summit ridge of the mountain 3,000 meters above it. The first ascent of Annapurna South Face was successfully accomplished in 1970 by a British expedition team led by mountaineering legend Chris Bonington, which followed a steep ridge up the South Face directly to the true summit of Annapurna, with the path up the ridge they had ascended from subsequently becoming known as the British Route following their historic ascent. Eleven years later, a Japanese mountaineering expedition led by Hiroshi Aoda successfully ascended the south face following another, steeper ridge than the British team had taken, which this time led directly to the slightly lower central summit, which subsequently became known as the Japanese route. However, in 1992, a third, even more difficult route, wedged between the ridges of the British and Japanese routes, would be attempted by two French climbers, Pierre Bégin and Jean-Christophe Lafayette. This route exposed the climbers to a barrage of falling ice and rocks as they ascended the steep slopes of Annapurna's south face. Both Bégin and Lafayette were two of the most elite climbers hailing from their native France, and managed to reach 7,400 meters before Annapurna's notoriously foul weather forced the pair to turn back. However, on their descent, Bajin fell to his death after one of his rope's anchors gave way, but Lafayette managed to descend successfully, despite having his right arm badly broken by a falling rock while he did so. In Bajin's memory, the route was named the Bajin Route, and the first ascent of this brutal climb wouldn't be attempted again until 2007, when it was once again attempted by the prestigious mountaineer Uli Steck who was struck by a falling rock at around 5,850 meters and concussed, forcing him to abandon his bid for the summit. After Steck once again failed to complete the climb in 2008, he had generated a good deal of interest in completing this brutally difficult route, and the first ascent of the Bajin route became one of the most sought-after first ascents amongst Himalayan mountaineering's elite. One of these elite climbers that sought to conquer the route was a man named Park Yong Suk. The South Korean mountaineer was an esteemed mountain climber and adventurer, having summited all 14 of the 8,000 meter peaks, one of mountaineering's most difficult and lofty achievements, and he had also ventured to both the North and South Poles as well. Park Yong Suk first attempted the Beijing route in 2010, but the attempt was abandoned after one of his team's members had his knee broken by a falling rock. However, the following year, Park would return with both his climbing partners from their previous attempt, a man named Shin Dong Min and a man named Kong Ki Suk, for another attempt at the treacherous climb. Park was extremely determined to complete the ascent this time, telling the South Korean media before his departure to Nepal, I won't just return home like last time, I will reach the summit no matter how long it will take. On October 9th, 2011, 
the party reached their planned location for their base camp and set up their camp and then began to set up ropes on the lower section of the slope as they took time to acclimatize to the altitude. While they were making their final preparations at base camp, the group debated whether they would descend the mountain from the southern side from which they came, or whether they would follow the summit ridge after their ascent and descend down the far simpler northern route instead, ultimately deciding that they would decide later. Finally, on October 17th, 2011, the climbing team of three were ready to begin their journey to the summit and set off from base camp. They had planned to ascend the route, alpine style, which is a style of mountaineering where mountaineers pack light and do not fix their camps ahead of time. However, because alpine style climbers do not establish their camps and haul gear between them, ascents must be made fairly quickly with their limited equipment and supplies. The team of veteran climbers had been making good time on their climb, and on October 18th by 4pm, they had reached an altitude of 6400 meters. It was at this time, however, the team radioed base camp to inform them that they had made the decision to abandon their summit attempt, as Annapurna had become enveloped in a powerful storm system, and they reported that they were also being battered by heavy rockfall from above. This radio contact was the last time anyone heard from any of the three men again. The members of the team back at base camp became concerned after being unable to contact the climbers by radio, and on October 20th, a search and rescue helicopter was dispatched to search for any signs of the missing climbers. However, the helicopter was unable to spot any sign of the missing men aside from a rope buried in the deep snow that they believed belonged to the trio, but this search helicopter was forced to abandon its efforts when the helicopter began to run low on fuel. Soon after, four Sherpas were sent to search on the ground and searched around the 5200 meter mark of the south face, but were similarly unable to find any trace of the missing mountaineers. In the following days, the search and rescue team was expanded to include 14 Sherpas and 5 Koreans all searching for any further signs of the men, with the Korean rescue climbers bringing along metal detectors to further assist in the search efforts. They theorized that it was likely that the climbers were struck by falling rocks and then subsequently were swept down the mountain by avalanches and into the crevasse field in the glacier below. However, this expanded search party was ultimately unsuccessful at locating any further signs of the missing climbers. On October 29th, the search was called off as the conditions on Annapurna were jeopardizing the safety of the rescue team members. After calling off the search, the devastated Korean members of the search team, many of whom had climbed with Park Yong Suk previously, vowed to return to Annapurna to search for the trio's remains. However, no further evidence of the climbers' fates has been discovered since. While the loss of Park Yong Suk, Shin Dong Min, and Kong Ki Suk were devastating to the Korean mountaineering community, many of Park's friends and admirers found solace in the fact that Park Yong Suk died doing what he loved, as he had been notably quoted saying, Mountaineers should be on the mountains. I will continue my expeditions until death comes. Thank you all for watching.